This is a series of videos that we're using to teach medical students about the physical examination. When you first get into medical school, you have to learn how to take a history from somebody. So how to get the person to tell you their story and then also how to do a physical exam. We think it's really important for medical students to learn about what's different about doing this in older adults. We call it geriatrics. I hope that you'll enjoy these videos as well. What do you need to know about the aging adrenal system of ferrets? Uh, humans, older humans. What do you need to know about the aging adrenal system in older humans? So I have ferrets on the brain. Uh, when I was uh, doing a bit of research for this video, I entered uh, in the PubMed database a search term. I looked up uh, aging, uh, adrenal gland, and geriatrics. And this was the first citation that came up. So uh, it wasn't a complete waste of time. I did uh, learn something. It was kind of an interesting article. Uh, I didn't realize that ferrets were considered geriatric when they were about four years old. Uh, but it wasn't really relevant to what I think you should know about the aging adrenal system. So I did do a bit more research and we're going to talk about what are some of the changes that you might see in an older adult with adrenocortical disease. So to very simply review the adrenocortical system, there's a pathway from the brain to the pituitary gland to the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland releases hormones, including mineralocorticoids and glucocorticoids, as well as some sex hormones, which we aren't really going to talk about. So the main functions of the uh, corticosteroids is to absorb sodium, excrete potassium, and also manage the body's response to stress. Now, diseases that are primarily affecting the uh, cortical system adrenocortical system are pretty rare and they usually occur in younger people. So they kind of are um, usually found between the ages of 30 and 50. These are things like Addison's disease or Cushing's disease or Cushing syndrome. They can have primary and secondary causes, of course, but in older adults, having a primary endocrine uh, issue that affects the adrenal cortex is pretty unusual. Remember that adrenal corticosteroids work in the body to number one, absorb sodium, number two, excrete potassium, and number three, manage stress. So when there is adrenal insufficiency or an underactive adrenal gland or system, uh, then we see significant postural hypotension. In fact, this can lead to tachycardia and ultimately vascular collapse. There are also effects on the kidneys that interfere with uh, water absorption and they can contribute to that circulatory collapse as well. So adrenal insufficiency can be very serious. In older adults, adrenocortical failure can mimic many other conditions. The symptoms, which are listed here, are pretty nonspecific. So they can include things like fatigue, confusion, depression, postural hypotension, which can have many causes in older adults, and other features. Most of the time when an older adult has adrenal insufficiency, it's because they're not on an adequate dose of a replacement steroid. Now that can be because they have a known adrenal insufficiency and they're just not on the right dose, or it could be because they're taking a steroid for some other reason and then undergoing some kind of a physiologic stress. So somebody could be taking steroids because they have um, a lung condition, and then they become ill with a pneumonia or something else, and the prednisone dose is not increased to account for the increased stress on the body. That's a very common cause of adrenal insufficiency in older adults. Another thing to think about is that the adrenal gland or the pituitary gland could be damaged in some way by a condition that can be common in older adults. An example would be a hemorrhage or an infarct. It could be related to metastatic disease that spread to the adrenals or to the pituitary, or it could be due to infiltration. 
Adrenal infiltration by tuberculosis used to be a very common cause of adrenal insufficiency. So those are all things that are worth thinking about. As always with older adults, there can be medications that can interfere with adrenal function. Uh, these aren't medications that people are commonly taking, but they include things like um, ketoconazole, rifampin, phenytoin, and midotain. So it's very important to look at someone's medication list when you see what you think might be adrenal insufficiency. So what are the three key things that I want you to remember about adrenal disease in older adults? Number one, always think about medication adherence. If you're seeing an older adult who is on a dose of a corticosteroid or mineralocorticoid and they seem to have adrenal insufficiency, make sure that they're taking their medications as prescribed. Number two, think about other causes of injury to either the adrenal gland or the pituitary gland. And number three, remember that the signs and symptoms of adrenal insufficiency are fairly nonspecific, and older adults can have atypical presentations of disease. So don't forget to think about the adrenal axis when you are seeing an older adult who has some of those nonspecific symptoms, including confusion. So if you want to learn more about ferrets, humans who are aging, please go to www.therinkle.com. Dot CA.